So, over the past year, we've had wave after wave of bad news, fiscal cliff, eurozone crisis, inflation running out of control, and the markets are going up and up. What's happening? It's interesting, isn't it? But one should always be a little wary about equity market price action, especially after imported news. The eurozone was temporarily on hold or stable because of Mario Draghi's action in September at the ECB to underpin eurozone sovereign markets. So he kind of bought some time for the eurozone politicians. We were expecting some fiscal cliff risk that was averted at the literally the 11th hour, actually past the 11th hour was in the, in the early morning of the first New Year's, wasn't it? And uh, so that was that's heartened markets. But that was temporary because they didn't address the limit of, of US public debt. That's mm. going to be looked at at the end of March again. So this is a two-month abeyance. So we shouldn't be absolutely, you know, completely excited about it. 2013 will be very similar to 2012. There'll still be lots of uncertainty. Well, that's true. Today was just 24 hours. But if we look at the <laughs> screen there, we can see, look, that's the broader index, the FTSE 250. And uh, my word, it had a pretty good 2012. Isn't the truth here, Murad, that investors have seen through the central bank's little game. The central banks are going to try to print their way out of trouble. They're going to print more and more money. That will bring inflation into the system. That will force up asset prices. Hey, bingo. Better news for shares. That's, well, yes and no. I mean, that's right. The central banks are printing their way out of trouble, and governments have relied on that to an extent because monetary policy is what's been used to address the problems after the recession, the global crash. That's a good trend. And if you ask me, I would expect the FTSE 250 and the 100 would be higher by the end of 2013 as well, slightly, not massively. But that doesn't mean all the structural issues on both sides of the Atlantic have not have been addressed. They haven't. The Eurozone is still sitting on a lot of problems and potential flashpoints. I don't think we'll see the Eurozone break up as such, but it's still got instability there. The UK, we're, we're potentially looking at a negative GDP number for 2012 as a whole in the UK. That's nothing to get excited about. But that's so, last year's news. Absolutely. What's what about this year's 2013? news? Well, if we saw greater than 1% GDP growth at the end of 2013, I'd be very surprised. So we'll yeah. have a plus number in front of it. But on both sides of the Atlantic, it's going to be bumping along the bottom. There's still, they haven't addressed the labour market problems on both sides of the Atlantic, but especially in the EU. They haven't addressed the labour market problems and also the public sector spending problems, i.e. the welfare state issue, in any li anything like a significant degree. Isn't there one almost unpalatable truth here? And that's uh, over, let's say, the last four years, the recession and beyond has absolutely poleaxe consumers, but for many companies, it's given them an opportunity to get their balance sheets in order, they've shed labour, they've hoarded cash, they're looking in pretty good shape, and investors think, yeah, we'll have some of that. That will work, and the equation will work out if the cash that they've hoarded actually gets invested. And what's holding off a lot of companies, whether they're SMEs, small companies, or the large institutions, is the continuing uncertainty, whether it's in the Eurozone or across the Atlantic. And that's holding back a lot of investment. It would be great to see this hoarded cash, and you're quite right, they have hoarded a lot. It would be great to see that actually being spent, being invested, you know, in, in the corporate world. And that would really help the economy on both sides of the Atlantic. And why do you think there has been such reticence, reluctance amongst big corporates to invest? Because they, they do realise that a lot of the structural issues, whether it's in the Eurozone or in the labour markets or in public sector spending, have not been addressed. Certainly Governments not in the United States. Absolutely right. I and mean, we had some good unemployment numbers re coming into the year end, but there's still a lot. There's still the overhang from the real estate crash. There are, there are a number of problems, more seriously in the EU and the southern Eurozone, but on both sides of the Atlantic, and they haven't been addressed. Governments aren't taking the tough decisions. Is it the case that until you're over the cliff, they will never address the fiscal cliff, because there's always tomorrow, there is always prevarication. You've basically summarised the politicians' mantra, because they're not in it for the next 10-15 years. They won't be in power for 10-15 years, so they won't look at a long-term solution. They're going to look at what gets them over the next, say, 6-12 or the next opinion poll, for that matter, if I'm going to sound slightly <laughs> cynical. No, so, you know, <laughs> so really, they're, 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 <laughs> that, that's the thing. They won't address the, where they, if there's a sticking plaster that will give a solution for the next 12 months, they're more likely to address that, if I can generalise, than look at structural issues, yeah. welfare spending, the labour market, you know, youth unemployment. These are big, the big problems and they need to be addressed, but they're not Indeed. being. Murad, nice to see you. Thanks for coming a in. Pleasure as always. Thank you.